now that a black woman can actually take on that character is also an amazing thing because it's just reminding us as Afro-Indigenous women that we deserve to be loved, we deserve to be feminine, we deserve to be seen as beautiful and enchanting and, you know, all of the things that <laughs> um, the prince fell for in the original story of The Little Mermaid. This is something that we get to really just relish in from this movie coming up. Peace and prosperity. This is the Saya Mystic. And welcome back to my channel. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. And today I'm here with another message to help you free your heart and soul. I am going to be talking to you guys today about the release of the trailer and the new movie. And if you're watching this in the future, this probably won't be new, but essentially this is going to be about the little mermaid and what the release of this movie means for black femininity and not only the release of the movie but the casting of the beautiful Halle Bailey for the main character role of the little mermaid so the first thing that i want to say is that it's about time, okay? It's about time that Afro-Indigenous women are being portrayed in mass media, in main character roles that have to do with mythological and more mystical areas of who we actually are more uh you know sci-fi what, what they would call sci-fi areas of who we actually are because at one point in time and this wasn't too long ago okay the when you look into the media and you see black people in the media in most of the movies and most of the things we don't really have or we didn't really have of prevalence in more mystical, mythical, and sci-fi kinds of stories. Okay, we get we got the drama movies, we got the you know, uh, you know the movies where uh, what is it like soul food and you know the gangster movies and barber shop and. You know, for a long time, a lot of black characters that I grew up seeing have always played in roles that are heavily perpetuating the reality of black people and what American black culture looks like. And you guys know why I do the hyphens when I say black. It's because black is not essentially the original way to identify the classification of black people is actually Afro-Indigenous because when you actually identify with being Indigenous, you can go deeper, right, into who you are and where you actually come from. Whereas black, just like every other race, puts you into this category. So that's why I do the hyphen thing. And for a long time, these were the roles that we played. These were just the roles that I saw growing up. And so now, things are shifting so much so to where there are a lot of Afro-Indigenous women who are starting to come out into media and take on these real um, mythical sci-fi stories that when they do it actually gives us an opportunity to connect the dots 
and activate a memory within our DNA of who we actually are. Because when we play in these roles that are perpetuating reality and drama and really just this life cycle of the matrix, like all of the things that go on in the matrix, especially for melanated people, it it's hard to sink back in with that memory because there's no story reconnecting us. There's no imagery being connected to the story that is allowing us to remember. So when you connect the imagery, meaning somebody like me who looks like me into a roles that are more symbolic in nature, are more mythical, are more um, e expansive in a sense that it is, it is all about activating your imagination, you actually at this point have the capacity to also activate that genetic memory of who you really are. We see this when Zoe Saldana took the role of Natiri in Avatar. We see this in, you know, uh, the Wheel of Time, right? And um, there were more Afro-Indigenous women. Actually, one of the main characters is an Afro-Indigenous woman who took on um, these mythical characters, right? And now we have Halle Bailey in The Little Mermaid. And mind you, there are other... Um, there are other examples of this, and if you know any more, just off the top of your head, feel free to put them in the comments below. But now Halle Bailey is taking on the role of the Little Mermaid, and a lot of you may be thinking, okay, like, the original character was, you know, a white woman with red hair. So how is this reconnecting anyone, anything, like... How is this activating our DNA? She's actually just filling in the role. Well, that's not what she's doing, actually. That's what you think it looks like because that's what the whole uproar was about when she got cast for this role. There was a whole bunch of people who were not okay, okay with that. But the reason that this, this is so amazingly impactful for Afro-Indigenous people and black femininity, right? And the way that Afro-Indigenous women really connect to themselves is because she is taking on a role that actually isn't originally a white woman with red hair role. We actually genetically have relation, a deep, deep relationship with the spirit of water, okay? The Afro-Indigenous people of this planet were the beginning. This is why I call it the primordial energy, right? And primordial femininity, okay? This is what I talk about on my channel. If I didn't already say that in this video, I talk about decolonizing spirituality and primordial femininity. And when you talk about and when you're understanding what it means to be primordial, you have to go back to the beginning, okay? The beginning is Afro. The beginning is melanated. The beginning, that's just what it is and that's just what it was. And a lot of people still to this day have a kind of hard time swallowing that. And over time, other races or uh, categories of beings came into the picture, okay? You got the Asiatic Mongoloid, you got the Dravidians, right? You got the um, Caucasian, right? Which was the last to get here. All of these things, this is, this is a planet that is billions of years old, right? This planet is ancient. This earth has been here for a while. Things haven't always been the way that they are now. Hard for a lot of people to believe. But this story connects us back and activates the memory with her playing this role that actually the original 
water people, right? And beings that lived in the water were Afro people. They were people who have hair like this, okay? And I always say, you know who you know who belongs in the water, right? The most because if you take an Afro person out of water, just look what their hair does, right? When Afro people have their hair immersed in water, it's right like it's moisturized, it's flowing, it's <laughs> it's softer, it's it's easier. And then when you come straight out of the water, it's like, where'd the water go? Where'd the water go? So her getting this role and her playing this role is activating that memory within all of us that there is a primordial memory of, uh, of us as a people being connected to the spirit of water. And that Afro-Indigenous people actually have a very strong connection to water. Just go to Central America, okay? Central America, which is the center and was once the center of this entire earth. That's why it's called Central and not Middle America. Just go into Central America and listen to the music of the Caribbean, of the islands, of, you know the the people of the central americas don't you just feel like you're being entranced by this uh spirit of water right listen to listen to the music right the music sounds like an oceanic experience and if you look at the women of the of the caribbean and the central americas right and even america right even in the Americas, but of Central America specifically, because that's right in in the area of the most mystical and enchanting waters that I feel. And I can't really compare it to anything else because I mean I've been I've been along the Pacific waters and the Atlantic waters, but there's just something about the Caribbean, you know, that really makes you feel like magical and mystical. And this is why I say just listen to the music. The water spirits are in the music of the Caribbean. The water spirits are in the, the fabric of, and it has to do with a lot of the reasons why a lot of people who live in Central America and the Caribbean still hold on to primordial, memories right and in indigenous practices of connecting to the land making this enchanting music um being connected to life right they still have and hold on to a lot of these things and are you if you try to bring in a lot of the conditioning of the modern matrix it just doesn't it doesn't work right it doesn't hold out for a lot of Afro-Indigenous people who live in the Caribbean, it's like they are pretty much, it's hard to penetrate them as it has been done on, you know, the mainlands in the places where we're not really readily connecting to that ocean and that water. People seem to be easier, uh, more easily influenced to subscribe to the modes of living, right? And, and kind of disrespecting the soul and the true nature of who we are as beings. So this is the core of what this is really activating in all of us when we get to see this beautiful young woman, Halle Bailey, uh, playing this role. And for me, this is what is activated in me. And not only that, but she's also stirring up and arousing the awareness of how beautiful and how enchanting and how mystical and how, um, you know, how expansive we truly are as Afro-Indigenous women. And that we don't have to keep subscribing to the 
what's projected onto us, right? In the media and in these drama series, right? And in these, you know, typical kind of storylines where you see black women as the the forefront, right, of these of these stories. We get to see ourselves in a story where we're actually being feminine, right? We're actually also being loved and honored, right? And I know the original Little Mermaid story. So I'm pretty sure I know already how the the new story is gonna go. It's gonna be like the old story. They might change some some things, but all I know is the and the Little Mermaid was a very feminine, you know, story. the The Little Mermaid was a very, you know, she was played a feminine role. She she was the the woman of the role. Now that a black woman can actually take on that character is also an amazing thing because it's just reminding us as Afro-Indigenous women that we deserve to be loved, we deserve to be feminine, we deserve to be seen as beautiful and enchanting and, you know, all of the things that <laughs> um, the prince fell for in the original story of The Little Mermaid. This is something that we get to really just relish in from this movie coming out. So I'm super excited for just the kind of rippling that this movie is going to is going to do. It's not just a story, but this is also going to impact young Afro-Indigenous women all over the world into feeling like I can be worthy, I can be beautiful with my natural locked hair. I can be spoiled and taken care of. I can be, you know, I can I can be the woman, right, that I want to be and I can be deeply loved as I am. I don't have to fit and change and be this archetype of black woman or you know, whatever it means to be a black woman. Okay? So this is what I feel like this really does for us and also connecting us back to our origins again. So I'm going to make a video in the future really going in depth with you guys about our connection to mermaids, our connection to water spirits. And this I talk a bit about briefly in my book, The Great Woman Resurrected. You can find that link down below in the description if you would like to purchase it on Amazon. It is available right now. And I'm also going to be going much more in depth on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in hearing, learning about that, that aspect of our ancestry and our connection to the earth. And I will see you guys in my next video.